And so to see government not be responsive like that to the people who pay them, it is offensive to me. And to not be responsive and available to those people, to, to meet with them and find out what their concerns are and to answer their tough questions, to not get back to people on the phone, who do you think you are? And who do you think you're working for? You're not cute enough. You don't dress well enough. Nothing about you is attractive enough to overcome that deficit. I, I completely agree. I think that's it. blown away by that answer, I got to say. That was Don Samuels, one of Ilhan Omar's primary opponents, and you just heard him criticize her physical appearance as well as the way that she dresses. Now, you also might have noticed that the female host of that podcast offered zero pushback to the explicit misogyny that we all just heard. In fact, she went on to ask him whether or not we can expect a debate between the two of them so we can hear more fiery rants like that one. You can't make this stuff up, folks. Now, uh, Ilhan Omar responded, writing on Twitter, this is beneath the dignity of any adult, let alone someone seeking public office. It is reminiscent of the worst kinds of lies and misogyny that we are hearing from people like Donald Trump, who think they can say anything about women and get away with it. Like Trump, instead of engaging in an adult debate, Don Samuels relies on lies and sexism. We need civility now more than ever, and Don's behavior should be alarming to anyone who agrees. Now, I'm never one to call for civility, but overall, what she's saying I think is important. This is a Trumpian move by her primary opponent, and he's saying this because he knows he can get away with it because the establishment by and large does not like Ilhan Omar and they would like to see him defeat her, even if he is being explicitly misogynistic in public to no pushback. Now, he responded, and not only did he not apologize, he went on to blame Ilhan Omar for daring to assume that he was talking about her. So he writes on Twitter, this is an attempt to mischaracterize a response about politicians who talk the talk versus walk the walk. Oh, bullshit. Uh, in listening to my full answer, it's abundantly clear that I'm talking broadly about politicians who value their own celebrity over the needs of their constituents. We shouldn't be surprised Representative Ilhan Omar saw herself in my response. I strongly encourage everyone to listen to the interview for themselves. Full question and answer begins at 2149. Unreal. Now, I find this response pathetic for a number of reasons, and what I especially love is that he claims he's talking more generally about politicians and not just Ilhan Omar, which is a very unserious thing to say, just apologize, but he's not. Now, he gives you the timestamp so you can see the full context, which he believes will absolve him of claims of sexism, but I think that he posted the timestamp because he honestly believes that people won't actually listen to the question, but we'll go ahead and do that because we, we need to see whether or not this is a mischaracterization to suggest that he was speaking about politicians more generally and not just Ilhan Omar. So listen to the way that the question was worded. Um, folks, like you mentioned, really like to have elected officials who not only talk the talk, but walk the walk. Um, I spent three years uh, out in Washington, D.C., working in Congressman Emmer's office. Um, we had him on the podcast, and he really emphasized how he believes working in Congress is a customer service job. I know you've been critical about Congresswoman Omar's lack of town halls, cons uh, constituent services. Um, speak a little bit to you why you believe that's so important and, and how you would um, make changes if you're elected. Gee, I can't fathom why she would see herself in his response after she was quite literally name dropped in the fucking question. Now, listen, even if she was never mentioned, it is delusional to think that he's not talking about his primary opponent because who else would he be referring to? If you're talking more general about politicians, most of which are male, by the way, would you bring up how they're not cute enough or don't dress well enough to get away with something that you think they're doing wrong? I mean, shut the fuck up. He's so full of shit. Now, I showed you all of the context, even though it's completely unnecessary, just so that way you can see how full of shit he is. I think that's pretty obvious, but 
The context does not absolve him. It's pretty clear that he was being explicitly misogynistic towards his primary opponent. Now, if he wants to criticize her for not holding enough town halls, I think that is a legitimate criticism to bring up that you can do without being sexist. The problem, however, is that he is once again lying. Jeremy Slevin, the senior advisor to Ilhan Omar, explains, in addition to being grossly misogynistic and defensive, this is a total lie. Ilhan Omar has some of the most effective constituent service in the country, has held multiple town halls every quarter this year, and even won the Profile and Courage Award from the Town Hall Project. Now, let me show you what that means. So in 2020, the Town Hall Project explained that they gave her this award specifically because she continued to hold town halls despite literal death threats and intimidation that she constantly received. And they added, whether you agree with Congresswoman Omar's politics or not, her courage and commitment to public service in 2019 are worthy of admiration. Now, they link you to an article from the New York Times that details the severity of some of these threats that she received. One of them was from a man who called her staffers and asked why they were working for a terrorist and threatened to put a bullet in her skull. But despite serious and repeated threats to her life, she continued to hold town halls despite what Don Samuel says. But yet, he still doesn't think that she's doing enough and certainly isn't cute or attractive enough and doesn't dress well enough to overcome that deficit. Amazing. This man is such a liar and his ability to be so confidently incorrect is astounding to me. But I think it is a product of him getting that support from the political powers that be who want to see Ilhan Omar defeated. Now, that's why I think he's he's arrogant. He's arrogant because he can get away with a lot because he knows that he can probably beat her and the establishment is going to allow him to do and say a lot in his effort to destroy her political career. Now, I say that because even though Ilhan Omar defeated her Republican opponent handily in 2022, she actually almost lost to him during the primary. So he was about 2,500 votes shy of defeating her. And now he's sending out the bat signal to APAC, who announced that it'll be spending $100 million in the next election to defeat progressives who are critical of Israel's genocide in Gaza. Now, Mother Jones reports when he announced his challenge to Omar earlier this month, Samuels, who has also come out swinging again Against Omar's critiques of U.S. support for Israel, that's a red flag there, and policing in Minneapolis pointed to last year's contest, claiming that that race laid the foundation for a rematch that holds the promise of a better future for our district. But that was also before he insinuated that the incumbent's appearance shapes her ability to govern. In other words, he is communicating specifically to groups like DMFI and APAC that he is in lockstep with them when it comes to their support for genocide in Gaza. And he almost beat Ilhan Omar the last time, so they would be wise to invest in his campaign this time if they want to get rid of her, which they do. Now, that APAC money could make all the difference this time because the money that he raised last time nearly drove him to victory despite having any policy substance. So more than $600,000 in outside money was spent on behalf of him, and that does not include the $130,000 in outside spending against Ilhan Omar. And as I alluded to, he wasn't even running on any particular policies aside from gun control and abortion rights, which Ilhan Omar already supports. But this time, he's not even pretending to care about policy issues, and his website literally does not even have a policy page because he knows it's not about policies. It's not about him. It's about defeating Ilhan Omar. And with enough money, he can make that happen. He can give the establishment what they want, and he could be the shill that actually pulls it off. So with that being said, out of all of the members of the squad, I don't actually think it's a stretch to say that Ilhan Omar is the most vulnerable. So I would highly encourage you all to send her a donation, regardless if it's a dollar or two, any penny helps. And if you live in her district, consider volunteering uh, for her because She's going to need our support. Losing her to this empty suit, to this misogynistic asshole who doesn't stand for anything would be devastating. So I think that we need to do everything we can to protect Ilhan Omar. She supports Medicare for all. He doesn't. She sponsored legislation to cancel all student debt. He doesn't support that as far as we know. He supports genocide in Gaza. She does not. Politicians like Ilhan Omar are a rarity, and I think that we need to go out of our way to make sure that we protect them and keep them in Congress after we fought so hard to get them elected in the first place.